Shall we all stand please? Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in the fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore also God has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow of things in earth, and things in, in heaven and things under the earth and that every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Welcome to our Sunday morning service. We thank you for joining us and for those that join us on, on the social media, we also welcome you. But as we, the theme for this morning is Christ Christian race. And for us to, we will have to be saturated in God's empowerment. We're going to sing on this prayer chorus before we go into our service. Saturate me in your anointing. Saturate me in your presence. I've got to have more of your anointing in my life. Saturate me, O oh Lord, today. Saturate me in your anointing. Saturate me in your presence. I've got to have more of your anointing in my life. Saturate me, O oh Lord. Go to the Lord in prayer and Sister Angie 
will take us to the throne of grace. Hallelujah. Praise God. Good morning, everyone. Praise God. Let us pray. Our God and our Heavenly Father, my God, indeed, we are grateful, my God, to be in your sanctuary another morning. Father, we give you thanks. Lord, and we thank you, dear God, for taking us all here, oh God. Father God, we thank you, dear God, that Lord, we can come, dear God, before your presence, oh God, to hear your words, oh God, and to lift up and to glorify your holy name. Father in heaven, I pray, O oh God, for your anointing blessings upon each and every one of us, my God. And help us, dear God, as we are here, Father God, that, Lord, may you supply all the needs, God, according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Father God, we pray, O oh Father God, for your man's servant this morning, as he bring forth your words to your people. I pray, O oh God, that you continue, Lord God, to inspire him. Lord, may you continue to hide him behind the cross. Lord in heaven, I pray, O oh God, for those, my God, that are not well. Lord in heaven, I pray, O oh God, that you'll anoint them afresh right now, my God. I pray, O oh God, that, Lord, you will touch them, my God, in a mighty way. Father in heaven, you are the great physician, Lord. And, Lord, with you, all things, not some, all things are possible. Father God, as you have said in your words, is there anything too hard for you? So, Lord God, we lift up your name this morning. We glorify your name. We say hallelujah to your name this morning, my God. We pray, oh, Father God, for the rest of the proceedings, dear God, of this morning's service. Lord, take fully control, my God, as I tell you thanks. In Jesus' precious name, I pray. Amen. Praise God. Saturate me, O oh Lord, today. I've got to have more of your anointing in my life. Saturate me, O oh Lord, today. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Know that we have been saturated by the Holy Spirit. We are ready and rearing to go. Just like what the theme said, Christian race. Right? And as Christians, we are so anxious to step or to run in the steps of our Savior. Hallelujah. As we sing on, blend our voice and sing on this wonderful hymn, Stepping in the light. And instead of stepping, we are going to sing running in the light. Because Amen. we are anxious as Christians. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise, Praise the Lord. God. Praise the Lord. Trying to, trying to run in the steps of the Savior. Trying to follow our Savior and King. Shaping our lives by His blessed examples Happy, oh happy The songs that we bring How beautiful to run In the steps of the Savior Running in the light Running in the light How beautiful to run In the steps of the Savior Let it Steps of faithfulness, mercy, and love. Looking to Him for the grace freely promised. Happy, how oh happy our journey's above. How beautiful to run in the steps of the Savior. Running in the light, running in the light. How beautiful to run. In the steps of the Savior, let him pass of life. Trying to run in the steps of the Savior, upward still upward we follow our guide. When we shall see him, the King in his beauty, happy, how oh happy. 
place that is sad A beautiful to run in the steps of the Savior Running in the light, running in the light A beautiful to run in the steps of the Savior Steps of the Savior Running in the light Running in the light How beautiful to run In the steps of the Savior Let it pass of We always want to get closer to the Lord because that is where our strength is. There is where our strength and our empowerment is for us to live and to run in this Christian race. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Praise Lord. God. At this time, we'll have our announcements and welcome and our very own Reverend David Lord will come and do it for Praise us. Thank God. you. Praise him. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Trying to run in the steps of the Savior. Praise God. Oh, we are asked hallelujah. to walk in his footsteps, to run in his footsteps, and to follow in his guide. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praises shall be in my mouth. I want to praise greet God. you this morning in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. God has been good to us and he has been supplying praise the Lord. all of our needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And so this morning, we just want to um, recognize those who will be having birthday this week. We want to send out um, birthday greetings to Sister Brenda Mitchell, celebrating her birthday this week. And so, Sister Brenda, we want to tell you that we love you, we celebrate with you, and we wish God's richest blessings continuously upon your lives. Also, we want to send out anniversary, our congratulations and anniversary greetings to Sister Ermeline Vassar and Sister Sylvia Taylor who are going to be celebrating their wedding anniversary this week. And we trust that God will continue to bless your lives, bless your marriage, and continue to supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. We just want to say that a number of events that were planned for this week has been canceled. Um, the men's fellowship meetings um, will not be held on Tuesday as the country will still be in a lockdown um, Tuesday evening. We go on a lockdown from Sunday to Tuesday, so there will be no men's fellowship this Tuesday evening. Also, the Agape ministry um, canceled their um, prayer breakfast for this Friday. Also, this morning, want to just um, send out some love and send out some, some greetings to some of our friends. You know, I've been receiving a lot of um, hello, you know, from different family members. You know, um, brother, uh, Mr. Green there, he, you know, he told me of his, his sister who sent her love to the church. And so we appreciate it. God bless you. Thanks for watching. And also, I, I get to find out who um, Miss Cheryl Grant and Miss Miller and these people who are from Canada who have been viewing our services. I um, get to realize um, who you are related to. We just want to shout out um, hello to you, all our viewers there in Canada. We just want to shout out um, our greetings and God's blessings upon your life. And may you continue to be safe as we battle this COVID-19. Okay, that's all the announcements, and so we just continue to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. God bless you. Praise Him. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Um, at this time, we'll be having the um, prayer for the offering. Bring ye all the tides into the storehouse. 
All your money, talents, time and love Consecrate them all upon the altar While your Savior from above speaks sweetly Trust me, try me Prove me, saith the Lord of hosts and see If a blessing, unmeasured blessing I will not pour out on thee Trust me, try me Prove me, saith the Lord of hosts and see If a blessing, unmeasured blessing I will not pour out on thee Praise the Lord Hallelujah, let us pray Father in heaven, we are here, Lord God, giving you thanks and praise this morning for the many blessings you have bestowed unto us, Almighty God. And Father, we have given you back, Lord Father, the blessings that you have blessed us, Lord Father. Almighty God, we lay it at your feet this morning, Lord God. And we ask, Father God in heaven, that you multiply it, Lord God, just like what you did, Lord Father, with the two fishes and the five loaves, Lord God. Almighty God, we know that nothing is impossible with you. We are going through a very difficult time at this time, Lord God. But Lord Father, we know you know everything. And you can, you can work miracle, Lord Father. And we're asking for a miracle this morning, Lord God. That you might just multiply it, Lord Father. That your message, your word might go forth continually, Lord God. In the holy name we ask. Amen. Amen. Praise yes. God. Amen. At this time, we are going to have the praise and worship team come and to... Render for us. Give them a hand as they come, please. Welcome them, please. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise, the Praise Lord. God. Good morning, everyone. It's morning. a wonderful privilege to be in the presence of God this morning. And as we run the Christian race, there are too many treasures up ahead. So we have to continue to reach that goal and to receive our rewards. Praise God. Praise Him. Too many months behind me.
I'm struggling the right road to choose. But somewhere up ahead, there is cool, clear water, and if I'm struggling the right road to choose But somewhere up ahead There is cool, clear water And defeat, it's one word I don't do His name is Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is Praise the, Lord. the God on the mountain. Praise, Praise God. God. Praise, Praise God. God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Life is easy when you're up on the mountain and you've got peace of mind. Down in the 
Christian race when you fall by the side my God will energize you and put you back on track and you know the good thing about this race nobody can come last everybody at first hallelujah. Hallelujah. hallelujah praise the Lord what a race it is what a wonderful race it is to have our affect, affection on the things above not on this earth Hallelujah. This time we'll have the reading of the scripture passage. Shall we all stand once more? And it's taken from Hebrews 4, from 1 to 4. And Sister Georgia will come and read for us. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Bless the Lord. The scripture reading is taken from Hebrews chapter 12. We're going to read from verse 1 to 4. Wherefore... Seeing we also are compassed with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Looking on to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest you be wearied and faint in your minds. You have not yet resisted unto blood, striving against sin. There ends a portion of the reading from God's holy word. We'll honor it by saying, thanks, thanks be to God. God. Praise, Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. 
Praise the Lord. Uh, I hope that you uh, are enjoying the service so far and have been drawn closer to Jesus Christ, the author and the finisher of our faith. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Um, at this time, we are going to be blessed once more with a special. And I'm going to ask Sister Hanji and the team to come for us.
the Lord. Praise, Praise the Lord. More encouragement, my Christian brothers and sisters. More encouragement. We should always be focused up, upon the things above, not on the things of the third. And we are gonna, we are not finished yet. Because the main course is here. Amen. Pass, uh, Reverend David Lord is gonna come and present to you the sermon for the morning. Hallelujah. Praise, Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm so excited this morning about the Lord yes. because he has saved me. He have been he has been healing me. Yes. And so he has been blessing me Praise the Lord. with all Praise the God. spiritual blessing in heavenly places Hallelujah. in Christ Jesus. I want to Praise say the that the um well this is an ensemble really. Um this is just part of the choir and truly my heart is blessed today from the ministry of the Newtown Independent Baptist Church Choir. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yes. Um, just to go back a little to our announcement, I just want to um, ask you to be in prayer for our brother Daniel Duncan. Um, he's in the hospital, and let us pray for him. And let's pray for Tricia and Dave, the Duncan family, at this time, because, yes. you know, they, at this time they are a little bit anxious and, and all of that, but we know that our Lord God is able to do exceedingly Amen. abundantly, Praise far above that which we are able Praise to ask Lord. him to do. And so, you know, when Daniel received that blessed, that accident, and I spoke to Trisha, and she gave me the, the, the progress and all of that, I remember Daniel 6, you know, when the king went down to the, the den and he saw Daniel that morning and Daniel said, you know, my God has shut the lion's mouth Hallelujah. and they were not Praise able God. to hurt me. Praise so um, we just keep continuing to pray for him. Um, the funeral service for Sister Daya's daughter, because of the lockdown on the 31st, will have to be on the 1st of September instead of the 31st of August. So you will get as little time with that as we get information. We ask you also that you continue to pray for the Uat family at this time. You know, Sister Valerie's family as they make preparation for funeral and all of that. They are, they are hurting and all of that. But we know that our God is able Hallelujah. to give them Praise grace God. each day to sustain them. Um, continue to pray for Sister Jean Beckford. As you know, her husband was laid to rest two weeks ago, and so the family is um, going through that process now. Continue to pray for her. Remember the Thompson's family, as this Mr. Thompson's sister passed on last week, and so we need um, to be praying um, for them. I, I think I might be missing out on another one. Um, yes. Um, the Phillips family um, just continue to pray for sister, um, the Phillips family uh, young Xavier um, we love him and he, he really touched our heart you know while he was here but um, the Lord would have it that you know we'd call him home at a very tender age but the family leave behind especially um, his father um, you know one and only son but let's pray for him, you know, yes. that the Lord will strengthen him in this Amen. difficult time. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. You know, a month ago, we had the Olympics in Tokyo, Japan. And we were all glued to our television set and our radios as we were all wishing the Jamaica team well. You know, and so the Jamaican team got nine medals, four golds, um, one silver, and, and uh, it was five, four, five golds, um, one silver, three bronze, I think. Nine, nine medals in all. But as a nation, we, we were very happy, and people all over, Jamaican style, you know, we were knocking our pot covers, and we were making a lot of noise, and, you know, our country, you know, have the, the, the three fastest women in, <laughs> on earth <laughs> at this time. And so we are very happy for that. And it's, it's good to be able to be identified with them as a Jamaican. You know, I don't know how many of you know that 
the Christian life is also compared to a race. Yes, amen. You see, it was very good for the New Testament writers to use these metaphors as several of the New Testament um, writers use the metaphor um, race, you know, in Second Timothy chapter 4 and verse 7 to 8, we see the Apostle Paul using it. In 1 Corinthians 9, 24 to 27, the Apostle Paul used it again. He used it also in Philippians 3, 14. And the writer of Hebrews, in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 to 3, used this metaphor as well. And so I, I checked out the word race. And I found out that the, the Greek word for grace is the word agios and it means agony today I'm taking the the message from Hebrews chapter 12 the Bible says here wherefore seeing we are also compassed with such a great cloud of witnesses let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does easily beset us and let us run with patience the race that is set before us our loving God and our Father we give you praise and we give you glory we thank you for who you are we thank you that even when we were dead in trespasses and sin when we were lost and without hope when we could not find our way back to you Lord you came looking for us father and our God we thank you it's for that reason that we are gathered here today to celebrate the Lord Jesus Christ our crucified and risen savior who is presently exalted in heaven at your right hand and lord he is there to make intercession for us god we lift up those who are hurting before you today all the persons who are in the sound of my voice who are hurting today Lord, we ask God for a very special touch of your healing and your grace. Some of them are not well physically. Some of them, God, are bereaved. Some of them, God, are discouraged. Some of them, God, they are having financial problems. Lord, there are some business people under the sound of my voice today, dear Lord, that their business, God, not doing very well because of the whole happening with the pandemic. But Father, and our God, we know that in you, God, is life. And Lord, just as how, Lord, you could quicken our dead soul, we know, dear Lord, that you have the power to raise the dead, and you have power, dear Lord, to heal our illnesses. You have the power, dear Lord, to breathe upon us and refresh us. You have the power, O oh God, to infuse, infuse life into some businesses that are going under. Lord, we pray, God, for your mercy. We ask you, Lord, that you will take this word today and you will use it, God, to bring encouragement and give hope to those who have been losing hope. Lord, remind us through this word today that the Christian race is not a sprint, but it's a marathon. And so, God, you are able to do exceedingly, abundantly, far more which we are able to ask you to do. So remind us today what you can do for us. We thank you, God, for the songs that were sung early on. Truly, they have been a blessing. They have, they, they have really lift up our spirit. Yes. Oh, God, we thank you for the faithfulness of these people Lord who have come out this evening and made a sacrifice yes Lord oh God to rehearse and and Lord able to put help to put this service together we thank you for them breathe upon them and strengthen them and encourage them 
Lord, we just thank you, Lord, for giving us this word, and we thank you for what you're going to do through us with this word today. As we leave everything into your hands, now in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 You know, as I look at this portion in Hebrews chapter 12, which we just read, I don't know how many of you would know that Hebrews chapter 12 actually started in chapter 10. I tell you before that when the Bible was written, it was not written with chapters and verses. Over a period of time when men, holy men of God, speak and when the writers, the, the, the scribes and all these people, they were putting it together, they put chapters and verses. So in chapter 10, the believers are going through persecution. And these people, they have given up so much for the gospel, so much for the Lord Jesus Christ, but yet still they are being persecuted and they are losing things, they are losing their belongings, they, um, they are being ill-treated and all of that. So the writer of Hebrews was writing to these people to encourage them. And so what he did under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit in chapter 11 he uses the great men of old who did such a wonderful job in their time of affliction and adversity. Right. He reminded the Hebrews of these people how they have run the race yes. Yes. and how they have finished the race. So after we finish chapter 11, he starts out Hebrews chapter 12 as wherefore. And you know that whenever you say wherefore, wherefore means as a result of what took place. He says, you know, these people who have run the race well, they have a, done a wonderful job. Yes. Hey, listen. These people are known as a cloud of witnesses. Right. They are a cloud of witnesses. And listen, gentlemen, they have done well. And they are urging you to hang on. Yes. To keep up in the race. Yes. Amen. Amen. There are times you're going to feel discouraged. There are times you're going to feel why well, you want to give up the when the hardship and the, and the persecution come. But keep on. Yes. Listen. What he's saying. He's saying that the button is passed on. They have finished their leg of the race. Right. The button is now in your hand. Yes. Amen. 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 And so, my brother and my sisters today. You are in the middle of the race. The button is in your hand. The apostle tells us how we are supposed to run the race. The apostle is telling us how we are expected to run our leg of the race. So number one, in verse one, he says, let us we must run light. As you run your leg of the race, run light. Yes. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If I you see, he says, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily beset us. Right. The, the word beset, beset means twat. And a much more easier word, you know, that we could use is, you, we could say, um, the things which easily distract us or the things which easily retard us. Two things are mentioned here. Weight. Weight is not necessarily sinful in itself. Weight can be some legitimate things. But if you ask Elaine and Shelley, 
and you saying who have run in the Olympics they will tell you that weight is not good <laughs> weight means bulk or mass every garments and what these will do it will retard your progress they will tell you an athlete must wear suitable sports gear you look at them they don't run in dress or pants i understand that the clothes that these athletes wear if you take all of them from them and put it in a scale, it barely wear one pound. <laughs> I, don't I don't know how many of you realize that. If you take if, even the spikes that they wear, they, these spikes, they are strong. And you know, these spikes advertise all the big name brand, you know. <laughs> they are strong, but they are very much light and, and it tells us of the discipline the discipline that must be done can i say this to you today for the christian it is no different you know the christian must strip himself of anything that will slow him down in this race amen amen so it means then that he must run light. Amen. You see, there are the inordinate affections. Right. You know, we have these things as we run the race that our minds. And the song today is keep your eyes on Jesus. But I tell you, it has to go through the eye gate first for us to go to the mind. And so, the body, you have to be careful because the body will call for some things. But you can't put those things in the body. Shelly Ann and Elaine and Usain don't, in the middle of the night, believe that they feel some dainties. And they just get up and just eat as what the body is asking for. They have to be disciplined. Right. Yes. You know, there are also the inordinate cares of this world. So your mind on the things of this world. You know what the Bible says? That will keep them in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. The Bible says, be not conformed to this world, Christians, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Amen. Praise God. You see, my brothers and sisters, if you have these weights, these inordinate affections and these inordinate cares of this world, I want to say to you today that these are dead weights on the soul. But not only did he, 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 he gave us or he spoke about the weight, but he spoke about the sin. This is any sin that has the greatest advantage over us. If you notice, it is said here that the, the sin that easily beset us. Can I say this? That you have what is known as darling sin. You know that little thing that you know about you know about that nobody else don't know about <laughs> that's the darling sin <laughs> you know david in his writing when he when, when he confessed this sin of adultery and murder before the lord he knows exactly what it was so he said in Psalm 51, 6, Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward part and in the hidden part. 
thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Amen. It's very interesting that there are some of us who on the outside things seem okay. But we have a hidden part. You know, I, I, I heard about a story once um, where this guy went to Kentucky to purchase some meal. And he purchased two boxes of um, Kentucky meal. And on his way, he found out that the cashier had mistakenly put some money in a box. And he got the money in the box. And he said, you know, I can't keep this. So he and the young lady in which he was driving with decided to turn around and go back to the Kentucky store. When they got to the store, they said, man, this is unbelievable. We, we, we don't know that people like you are still around anymore. So here's what we're going to do. We, we're going to call the TV station. We want them to come and we want them to do a report and we want to highlight this. And the young man said, no, don't. Because the young lady that I am with is not my wife. So, you, you, so, you know, we do have hidden parts. God, you, know, you know, the Bible says that, you know, the old old desires truth in the inward parts. And so, in Psalm... 19 the apostle the david says uh, keep thy servant from secret sins right. and don't let it have dominion over me yeah. you know what i'm trying to say to us today is that darling sin is so powerful that it will keep us behind in the race yeah. if you hold on to your darling sin it becomes weight yes. it retards you and it keeps you behind in the race. You know, the, the, the Bible says, Isaiah 59, 2 says, you know, your sin has separated between me and you. Amen. You know, so I urge us today that what we need to do as human beings, as the people of God, that we need to keep our bodies under subjection. You know, the Bible says, uh, all things are lawful for me, but all things are not profitable. Oh, praise the name of praise the, Lord. the Lord. No wonder the Apostle Paul, you know, in his writing in Second in First Corinthians 9 and verse 24 to 27. You know, Paul here is saying, Know ye not that they which run in a race run all but one receive the prize. So run that you may obtain. For every man that striveth for the master is temperate in all things. Which means he have control. Now if they do it to obtain a, a corruptible crown. But we an in, incorruptible crown. A crown that is undefiled, incorruptible and faded not away. So Paul said, I therefore so run not as uncertainty. But I keep my body under subjection. He urges us to keep our bodies under subjection. Because what? He does not want to be disqualified. Right. You know, I sat and watched the Olympic Games. And there was this young man by the name of Hughes from England. He trained for five years. And he was... He's, he was called out for false starting and was taken out of the race. And I looked as he walked dejected away. And I felt it for him. And I looked at my wife and I said to my wife, you can just imagine how it would feel for a Christian mm. yes. having lived for God and at one moment, he does something that is wrong and it disqualifies him for heaven. You know, I, I'm so glad for God's grace Hallelujah. and mercy. Hallelujah. Because, the, the, you know, Hallelujah. there are some persons who read this portion Hallelujah. and they believe that is a safe and lasting. No. 
But actually, it was talking about rewards. Yes, yes. You lose the reward. Yes. Not your salvation, not Amen. the relationship Amen. Amen. with God. Oh, Amen. praise the name praise of the Lord. Lord. So, you know, God. so we are encouraged here to run light. Yes. But then we are also encouraged from the word of God to run with endurance. Amen. Let us run with patience the race that is set before us. You know, in 1992, in the Barcelona Olympics, Derek Redman, the British 400-meter runner, was ahead of the field, set to win the gold medal. But on the final bend, he picked up an hamstring injury. And he went down. But he got up. Face. Gremlin. Held on. To his injured leg. And he started. Limping. Towards the finish line. By the time. The other runners had passed him. But he was there limping to the finish line. And his father saw the agony as he agonized. The father rushed to him and the father said to him, Son, you don't have to put yourself through all of this. But Derek Redman replied, Dad, I, have, I just have to finish. I just have to finish. I just have to finish. Yeah. And so he limped to the finish line. And when he crossed over that line, everybody in that stadium yes. stood up, up to their feet. Amen. And they gave Amen. him a, a standing Amen. ovation. The Christian... Race is not a sprint. Yeah. It's a marathon. Yes. Amen. Therefore, it is natural to get cramps. Come on, Christians. Yeah. Child of God, hear me today. The Christian race is a marathon. So it's natural to get cramps. It's natural to get bruises. It's natural to get blisters. And even at times to get exhausted. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. You're running a marathon. But I challenge every child of God under the sound of my voice today. That as you run the race, you must recognize your duty. You must recognize your duty as an ambassador right. for Jesus Christ. Amen. You see, an ambassador is a representative. And Christians, as you participate in this race, Remember, you are representing heaven in the race of life. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Therefore, Amen. every child of God must display endurance yes. Amen. in suffering. Yes. Amen. If, if, if you do notice there, um, in, in Romans chapter 5, uh, you know, the, the apostle Paul starts out and says, Therefore, we are justified by faith. Through the Lord Jesus Christ. In verse 2, he tells us that because of justification, we have access into the grace of God. Through prayer, we can go into the throne room. Yes. Hallelujah. But you know, he said, we're not only to rejoice in the access and only rejoice in being having the access and having the peace with God. But he says uh, we must also glory. Verse 3 in the tribulation. You know what is tribulation? Hardship. Yes. But he says knowing that tribulation work at patience. Oh praise the name Amen. of the Lord. Amen. And patience experience and experience hope. Right. Yes, Christians. 
Brace yourself for the hurdles in the race, man. Brace yourself for the intimidation. Brace yourself for discouragement. Elijah, prophet of God, called on fire yesterday out of heaven and tomorrow or today he's running for his life. I think that fits some of you under the sound of my voice today. Yesterday you had great victory. But today you are lying under a juniper tree. Get up in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Get up Hallelujah. and cut out the pity party. Yes. The Bible says you must be sober, you must be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, is, is, is like a roaring lion and he's walking, seeking whom may devour. You know, James got into the action. And so James 5 and verse 10 says, Take my brethren, the prophets who have spoken in the name of the Lord for an example of suffering, affliction, and of patience. Behold, we count them happy which endure. You have heard of the patience of Job and have seen the end of the Lord, that the Lord is very pitiful and of a tender mercy. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. Lord. You know, the sad part of it today, as we looked at this message, statistic, Brother Gregory, shows much difference in Christianity than what I mentioned about Derek Redman. Statistics shows that many Christians easily give up in the race. They don't have the spirit and the attitude of Derek Radman. So today, we have some pastors, we have some missionaries, we have some church leaders. We have some people who heads up ministry in the church. What they do? They give up. You just have a son ballot and a tobaya. Just say something. And they give up. Mm. They give up. Yeah. You know, can't finish the race. But I say to you today, the Apostle Paul says in Philippians 3:14, he says, I press towards the mark of the I calling. You have to decide to press those muscles. Yes. Yes. yes, hallelujah. As you look and focus on the finishing line, you need to stretch and press towards the mark. You know what Paul says before he said that? He said, I forget those things which are behind. You know the problem with some of us in our Christian life, we look in behind us too much. Along the way, we're looking behind us because we, we are mindful of what people are saying, what people have done for us. Let me tell you something. Child of God, remember that if you're driving your car, you have two side mirrors and you have a rear view mirror in front of you. Have you ever considered how small the rear view mirror is and the two mirror at the side? But look in front of you. Look in front of that windshield that is before you. You saw all that windshield big? <laughs> it means then that behind you, child of God, not so important. Oh, come on. Glory to God. Behind you, not so important. Of, oh, it is important to see in front of you. Yes. Oh, glory to God. Amen. You Amen. need to run your race yes. with endurance. Yes. yes, man. The Apostle Paul, man, when he finished film, journey, man, he said, man, I fought a good fight. Hallelujah. I finished my course. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
and foot they've laid on for me. A crown of life. Yes, I've finished my course, which yes. means in, in, in run right up to the finishing line. Yes. And in craft the line, I have finished my course. Oh, glory to God. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. So we run with endurance. And we run light. As we look in a portion today. Verse 2. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So run with your eyes on the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. You run light. You run with endurance, but run with your eyes on the Lord Jesus Christ. It means that you must fix your eyes on Jesus. Hallelujah. Rivet your eyes on Jesus. Amen. You heard early on, Peter was doing so well. But when he saw the wind and the sea started to swell and roar beside him, Peter took his eyes off Jesus. And what happened to Peter? started to sink yes. brothers and sisters I don't know this morning who exactly I'm talking to but I'm going to say to you today the greatest encouragement in preserving your faith is the supreme example of the Lord Jesus Christ Amen. 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 the Bible says Christ Jesus is the author and finisher of our faith. Yes, he's the author of our faith, which means he must be the object of our faith. We must keep our eyes on him. He is the leader. Keep your eye on the leader, church. Because not only is he the leader of our faith, but he's the perfecter of our faith. Oh, glory to God. Oh, glory to God. He is the perfecter of our faith. And what I'm trying to say to you today, that not only he is the perfecter of our faith, but he is the finisher Amen. Praise God. of our faith. Hallelujah. Praise the name of our God. Praise him. He left the splendors of heaven and he came to earth on a mission. And when he finished the mission, he was able to say to his father, I have finished the mission that you gave me to do, Father. Let me tell you something. God calls every one of us and he has given us a job to do. We have a mission to do. And when you get into that race, you run. It doesn't matter what's happening around you. You keep your eyes on Jesus. And when the discouragement comes, when the hardship comes, just remember Jesus. Jesus endured the contradiction of sinners against himself. So what did he do? He endured the cross. You know, you know the cross is a an uh, instrument of death, an uh, instrument of torment. And, and the Bible says, uh, whosoever will come after me, take up your cross and follow him. In those days, they, they know that any man walk up Golgotha's hill with the cross on him shoulder, him not coming back. Right. When you decide to take up the cross, you're not going back, you're going up that hill. To die. And so nails were placed in his hands and his feet and sword in his side. And yes, they put a sword up into his side and it went up to his stomach. That even the Bible says blood and water came out of his side. Yes. Agony. Child of God. Remember Jesus Christ when he was going up Golgotha's hill with that cross. He fell with that cross. Yes. But did he lay down? Oh, Some of you need to do better than that. Jesus Christ set the example. He fell with the cross. But every time he fell, he got up. Yes. Why? 
because he says I have a job to finish and I'm going to finish it yes you need to finish your amen, job amen. he endured not only the cross but the shame yes. they cursed him when he was reviled he reviled not when he suffered not he threatened not they spat in his face they buffeted him they did all the unkind things to him reproaches were cast upon him in his life even at his death but the Bible says that he opened not his mouth Amen. and so Isaiah reminds us interesting thing that when Isaiah started out it, because he knew that it was so going to be so bad Isaiah said you know who shall believe our report <laughs> who is going to believe this Yes, he was oppressed, he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He's brought to a, as a lamb to the slaughter and a sheep before a sheep is dumb. So he opened not his mouth. Right. He was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities and the chastisement of our peace was upon him. So when you're going to talk, and you're in your pity party and you easily get up and you're saying that God it's best for me to die like Elijah you know the Bible says we do not have an high priest who cannot be touched, who cannot be touched the with the feeling of our infirmities he was tempted in all points like us yes, yes. you see what separated what, what supported this human soul under such unparalleled suffering Christ Jesus is, is, is 100% man this is God in the flesh and he's going through all of this and you wonder Greg why didn't he just call 10,000 angels as the song said but that song is not so true Because he said, if I wanted this to stop, I'd call on my father and he would send. How much legions? Legions of angels. 72,000 angels and they would rescue me. So not 10, but 72. And they would rescue him. But he didn't. He had the power to do that and he didn't. We need to find out why. It's there before us. I love this. I love this. That's what the Bible says here. Oh, for the joy that was set before him. Oh, for the joy that was set before him. Hallelujah. You know what that is? The reward. The medal ceremony, man. Oh, yes. You watch the Olympics and see when they get the medal and they get the bouquet. Yes. And the flag. Yes. With the national anthem. Yes. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. What a wonderful experience. Amen. You know... You know what type of what reward Christ got, Brother Reed, for going through much shame, contradiction of sinners, and all of that? You know what he got? Wherefore God has so highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. Yes. I've had the name of Jesus. Oh my God. That every knee must bow. <laughs> and every tongue must confess that he is. Hallelujah. He is exalted to a station of the highest honor. And guess what church? Because of that, he ever lives to make intercession for us. Oh glory to God. So I close today. 
as you run in this race. What is our duty to respect this Jesus as we run our leg of the race? The Christian's race. As I close, look unto him. That is, we must set him continuously before us as our example. He must be our great encouragement as we run in this race. And so we must look to him for a de direction in the time of suffering. When we need assistance, we need to look for him. You know, he says in Matthew 28, 11, no, Matthew 11, 28, he says, come unto me, all ye that are heaven laden, and I will give you rest. And I'm saying this as I close today. Whatever your situation you are going through as a child of God, as you run the leg of your race, God is shaping you for his glory. It is said that during the Great Depression, a good man lost his job. Exhausting, exhausted his savings and forfeited his home, his grief was multiplied by the sudden death of his precious wife. That's the only thing he had left was his faith. The only thing he had left was his faith. But after a while, his faith started to get weak. So one day, he was combing the neighborhood and looking for work. He stopped to watch some men who were doing the stonework on a church building. One of these men was skillfully chiseling a triangular piece of rock. Not seen where the spot where it would fit, he asked the question. Where are you going to put that? The workman pointed out towards the top of the building and said, See that little opening up near the spar? That is where it goes. I am shaping it down here so it will fit up there. The lesson here today, as I close, as you travel through the race, some of you are going through some terrible, troublesome times in yes. your life. Yes. You may not experience some heartbreaking sorrow. You may be experiencing some heartbroken sorrow at this time. Or perhaps you are enduring some painful physical illness. Or it may be something else. It could be bereavement. It could be a financial situation. It could be discouragement. You're planning to give up. You're planning... To give up on your ministry. And I know that whatever you are going through as you go through this leg of the race, it's very excruciating to talk to somebody about it. Because you see, the blows of the armor and the chisel really hurts. Especially. If your own sisters and brothers are cutting you down. But my encouragement to you today is hold on to your faith. Yes, these difficulties getting you down. But I say to you today, they are temporary. The Bible says what you see today is temporary. But what you can't see is eternal. Amen. 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 Child of God, I say this to you today, that glory is coming. The glory is coming. 
keep on running light. Keep on enduring. Yes. And keep on with your eyes amen. on the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. If you receive it, say amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name Hallelujah. of the Lord. Hallelujah. Let us all stand Hallelujah. as we sing on our closing song. Hallelujah. If, if, if I walk in the pathway of duty, if I work till the close of the day, I shall see Hallelujah! 
Praise God. God. Glory to God. Praise Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What a word. Yeah. What a Hallelujah. word this is this Sunday morning. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're reminded that we were handed the button. Hallelujah. We also reminded that we should run light. Lay aside every weight, every sin that has beset us. Run with endurance. And hallelujah, the conclusion of the whole matter is to run with our eyes upon the Lord Jesus Christ. The author and the finisher of our faith. Glory to God. Glory to God. I know that we have been, our eyes are set upon the Lord Jesus Christ this, this afternoon. Amen. Glory to God. At this time, we'll, we'll read the benediction and the doxology. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you for joining us this morning. And join us back on tonight on our Zoom meeting at 7.30 p.m. And also on Wednesday night at 5.45 p.m. And we'll be back on Sunday morning at 11 o'clock for our divine worship. Have a blessed and a holy week. Go in peace. Amen. Praise Hallelujah. God.